How you doing? So if you're interested in looking at an example problem involving resistors, capacitors, and inductors, and how to analyze the circuit, you have come to the right video, because I'm going to go ahead and give an example. So here we go. So this RLC is going to stand for resistor, inductor, and capacitor. And I know the L doesn't really fit with inductor like R, the R and C do, but hey, I didn't make this up. Um, just uh, don't shoot the messenger here. But uh, let's start by going ahead and just drawing out the circuit, and then we'll, we'll um, discuss what we're looking for. And in this problem, we are given values for these three impedances. So this first one is going to be a value of 40 ohm, this resistor. That inductor is going to have a value of 3 Henry's. And that capacitor is going to have a value of 1.667 millifarads. And we are given a voltage source. Let's go ahead and write down our knowns over here. And we're given that our voltage source is equal to 169.7 cosine of 360 degrees times 3.18 hertz T plus 30 degrees. So that is one known, and the other known is going to be our RLC values, which are given up here. And now we move on to our unknowns. What we're going to try and find, particularly in this circuit, is going to be IS. We are looking for IS, that current that's running through this. All right, and in order to find this um, IS, I'm gonna, we're going to go through five different steps here. So our first step is going to be converting our voltage source to a phaser. Step number two is going to be find angular frequency omega. And this is a small omega. And step three is going to be find impedances. Step four is going to be find equivalent impedance. And finally, step five, we're finally going to get to IS. Um, and we're going to find it via Ohm's law. All right, so let's get started. So first step, we're going to convert VS to phaser. So we have um, 169, of course that's our VM, and in the phaser notation we're going to want RMS. So we're going to want, um, we're going to say our VS is equal to 169.7 over square root 2 as that amplitude, and that angle we're given here is 30 degrees. And dividing by square root 2, we just end up with 120 conveniently at 30 degrees. So that is our VS in phasor form. And second part was to find the angular frequency omega. And we know omega is simply 2 pi f. And that frequency is given here at 3.18 hertz. And if you go ahead and multiply these, you just end up with our omega is equal to 20 radians per second. So we check that one off pretty quick. Um, next one is, um, takes a, look, a couple more sub steps to it and is find the impedances here. So we've got three different impedances. The first one's really easy and we'll call that uh, Z sub R. And that is simply equal to that resistance of our resistor. So that's gonna be 40 ohms. All right, next thing we wanna find is our impedance of our inductor. So we'll call that Z sub L. And that is simply going to be J omega L. So that's going to equal J times our omega, which was 20 radians per second, times our L value, which was 3 Henry's. This is going to equal J times 60 ohms, because on the side here, a Henry is equal to ohm second as far as these units go. And so we get ohms here. And next, we want to find the impedance of our capacitor. So we'll call that Z sub C, and that's going to be negative J over omega C, where C is our capacitance. So that's negative J 
over 20 radians per second, times our capacitance is 1.667 times 10 to the negative 3 farads. So cranking through the math on that, we get negative J30 ohms. And we know that because on the side here, as far as units go, one farad is going to be equal to one second per ohm. So the, so the units work out. So um, we've checked off three. Let's go ahead and check these off. And moving on to four here, find the equivalent impedance. And um, this one's pretty easy because it's in series. And these impedances just uh, um, add up like resistors do. Since they're all in series, you can just add them all. So that's not too bad. So we'll go step four over here. And our impedance, our equivalent impedance, is going to be the addition of all three of these. And just translating the values that we found over here, we have 40 ohms plus J60 ohms minus J30 ohms for a grand total of 40 plus J30 ohms. So that is our equivalent impedance. And finally, step five, we're going to want to find IS via Ohm's law. So let's go ahead and do that one. Um, but first, before we find it, um, we're going to want to actually convert this into a phasor form because our voltage is, we got our voltage in a phasor form. To use Ohm's law, you want them in the same form because we're going to be um, doing some division. Um, so let's go ahead and convert that. In this case, our A value is going to be the square root of 40 squared plus 30 squared. And our phi value is going to be the inverse tangent of our imaginary over our real, 30 over 40. And it turns out this is going to equal 50. And this is going to equal 36.9 degrees. So knowing that, we can convert this into its phasor form. And let's go ahead and finish 5 up here because we've defined IS. We've got a little space up here. So IS, according to Ohm's law, is just going to be um, V sub S over Z, which is our, our new R since we're working with the RLC circuit analysis. And we found um, V sub S up here. So that's going to be uh, 120 angle 30 divided by our new Z, which is going to be 50 with an angle of 36.9. So um, in order to find um, that amplitude, we're just going to divide 120 by 50, which gives us 2.4. And that angle, we're just going to subtract um, 36.9 from 30, and that's going to give us negative 6.9. So that is our phasor for our I sub S. And if we go ahead and just finish this off, let's go ahead and put that back into this um, proper form up here. So this is our RMS, so we're going to want to multiply this by the square root of 2. So if we do that, we end up with 3.39 times the cosine of 360 times 3.18 hertz T minus our phase, which is 6.9 degrees. And that is our final answer, which is going to be small here because I ran out of space. And that is how we find our current here um, by Ohm's law with our voltage source and our total impedance, which is the addition of all these components, which are found by all these equations um, based on this angular frequency that we found. And that's how you solve um, this certain type of RLC circuit analysis problem. So hope it was helpful, and until next time, take care.